All right. We have here what we call the laser view system made by Bina Vision out of Atlanta, Georgia. They're now part of WebTech, a larger company, bought them. Uh, this was developed in the early 2000s, been around a while, but it has a uh, handheld portable computer here and uh, battery powered, and this is the measurement head. Now, the way this works is you have a magnet in that. Oh, that's cool. Put it right there. And then we, we put this on the wheel here. And then we have this, this, flan, uh, this slider here that we pull up to the bottom of the wheel tread. Okay. Now, the really cool thing about this is by knowing the distance between these two pins and knowing the height of this, you can calculate the diameter of the wheel through mathematics. <laughs> computer can do it, not me in my head, but the uh -huh. computer can. So you set it on here, and then you scan across like this with this laser head up to here, and that captures the, uh, the distance that the sliders move, this point right here. And so you can go across and you get a full scan of the entire wheel profile. Nice. Now, the problem is... Not a problem, but the reality is these are fairly expensive. Like well, no doubt they are. $20,000 roughly, give wow. or take U.S. dollars. So uh, the Mini Prof does the same thing. It's in the same price range. So um, the beauty is when we do wheel wear studies and we're trying to optimize the wear rates for a railroad, you want to take measurements very accurately, like month to month, uh -huh. to see what the rate is per a million miles or a hundred thousand miles uh, however you want to normalize it so that's the nice thing about a very accurate system now I'm going to show you one other system that I use we'll be right back with that in a second okay all right now we're going to go from a twenty thousand dollar system to about a twenty dollar system <laughs> and this is a simple tool you can buy at hardware stores and places it's called a carpenter's profile gauge or needle gauge okay and carpenters use these to trace uh, moldings and things like that to, mm -hmm. to replicate them well it's also useful for obtaining a wheel profile out in the field it's quick it's easy it's low cost the accuracy is not as great as lasers maybe 16th of an inch plus or minus but for railroad derailment work it's an excellent tool and I use this all the time I teach my classes to use it and to obtain wheel profiles because the shape of the wheel tells you a lot about how the truck is performing, whether it's steering or not, whether it be prone to a wheel climb or prone to a pick switch or something like that. Okay. So you just, a lot of people look at a wheel and a wheel is a wheel. And I look at it, I look at that precise shape, the hollow tread, the flange height, all these things. So this, this is, is another easy tool to use, easy to carry. Kind of as a side note, trying to get that laser view through TSA scanners is always a problem. It <laughs> looks pretty ominous to the TSA agents, so I carry this with me on airplanes. Um, the other thing, I hate checking that. It's so dang expensive, and if I lose it, which I did once when I went to Australia, <laughs> I lost for three weeks, finally got it back. Wow. But uh, that's, that's the thing when you, you carry something expensive. Now, this thing was real easy. You just... Uh, you place it over the wheel and you push these needles down like this and I won't take a lot of time here to to do it but when you get up around the flange you take a little bit of time and this traces the exact profile nice okay and that leaves the rough profile of the wheel and I can come over here to a piece of paper I'm just doing this kind of quick, but you can draw the shape of the the wheel profile. Now, I didn't take a lot of time to, to make it extremely accurate, but you get the idea of mm -hmm. how this tool can obtain a, a copy of the, of the wheel profile. Very good. I also use it for rail profiles as well. Awesome. Or switch point interface, whatever I need a profile of. And uh, well, that would be a good thing for me to do. Yeah. 
because I don't have a gauge for the rail profile. Okay, well that can give you an approximation of how the gauge face of the wear of awesome. the rail is wearing. And uh, yes. ID, I also use it to get the head height of the rail, how much wear has occurred vertically and laterally on the rail head. Wow, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get, go home and uh, get on eBay and get me one coming. Uh, this one came from. Uh, <laughs> I love this, this stuff. This one came from Lee Valley Tools in Canada. It's a website, Lee Valley, and uh, it's the best one I found. You can go to the hardware store, Ace or Home Depot, and get one. And uh, but this has a uh, very long needles on it, so it's good for wheels and rail both. Great. All right. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Wolf, for sharing all that information with us. So note, these gauges are available at Winchester, that's one site. Railroad Tools and Solution in Cincinnati also sells some of these gauges. Mm -hmm. They're fairly expensive. This hollow tread gauge is, I think, a couple hundred dollars. The other ones are 50 to 100, but they're precision instruments. Uh, cut with uh, you know in a machine shop to right. thousands of an inch accuracy. Wonderful. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, I'm illustrating. This is the 2024 version of the field manual of AAR interchange rules governing the specifications of any rail car that is interchanged with other railways across the country, Canada, and Mexico. They're all, all governed right. by these standards. And Rule 41 contains all the critical measurements for wheels. You see the gauges here that I just showed you in person are illustrated in Rule 41. And uh, there's the uh, hollow tread gauge right there mm -hmm. that we talked about. So if you're interested, uh, there's more information in Rule 41 on wheels and uh, wheel defects all right go back to your uh shelled spot yeah uh i thought i saw it there maybe uh, I did. there's a thermal cracking a a wheel shell that is greater than well here's built up tread and then uh this is wheel shelling down here and if a wheel shell is greater in diameter than a u.s quarter which is one inch it's a condemnable defect for a wheel. Okay, right here's the gauge. Yeah, that's the gauge with a one inch hole in it. And there's some other pictures of wheels here as well in rule 41. Wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Do this. Okay. Another measurement, the final one I want to discuss with you is called the back-to-back -back measurement from one wheel, like here on the left side, over to this side. This dimension is very tightly maintained at 53 inches, plus or minus a few uh, sixteenths of an inch tolerance. The reason being that, first of all, for track gauge that is 56 and a half standard, we want the wheels to fit it right. Mm -hmm. And also, when you get in the frog area of a turnout, your dimensions called guard check and guard face from the guarding, uh, the face of your guardrail over to your wing rail or gauge line of your frog have to be tightly maintained as well to a few sixteenths of an inch for all this to work together. Because if the wheels got too wide or too narrow, they would not properly go through switch frogs and switch points and, and other and, and, uh, crossing diamonds and other track appliances. So, we check the back-to-back -back with, uh, there's a gauge that can be used, a go-no-go. -go. This is a tape measure gauge. And we put it over here on the back of one wheel. We come over here, where you can see the, the 53 right here is right to the back of this wheel. So that's, that wheel is dead on. Wonderful. And that's another check. Now, when we measure wheels in a derailment, we tell them to measure it at three locations, like at 12 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and 8 o'clock points on a, on a clock, because an axle can get bent in a derailment. Just very slight bend in the axle, a quarter or a half inch, will throw this back-to-back -back measurement off. 
and make mm -hmm. the wheel look wider at the top and narrower at the bottom. So you want to measure it in three places to be sure that the wheels are still parallel to one another and you don't end up with a bent axle or something like that. Great. Ready? All right. All right, we got one other feature here we want to show you. This is a, a universal wheel gauge because it contains the standard high flange gauge, your two thin flange gauge, your vertical here, and also this circle is approximately the size of a U.S. 25 cent quarter. Mm -hmm. Now, this is used to test if you have wheel shells, and wheel shells are areas of the wheel tread that will break out from heavy contact stress. And the AR says that if you have shells greater than one inch diameter, then it becomes or can become a defective wheel. Mm -hmm. Or if you have more or less continuous shelling around the entire rim of the wheel. So the one inch hole on this gauge allows you to check the width of shells. Small shells are acceptable, but as a wheel wears, it will start to develop little cracks like potholes in a uh, highway. And when they exceed this dimension, it becomes condemnable by AAR rule. There you have it. There you got it. Another little feature. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Yep. This is my gauge, too. Got this off of eBay. Well, this is Mr. Wolf's book, The Complete Field Guide to Modern Derailment Investigation. It's over 430 pages of uh, railroad information on all kinds of stuff. Uh, this is a, an, over a thousand different uh, photos. So I highly recommend this for all railroaders and for all train fans. It's uh, just chock full of information. There's a link in this video's description uh, to go to Mr. Wolf's website where you can order your copy of this book.